So do I regret buying magic cards in 2022? And would I suggest buying and investing? So first of all, let's take the term investing. When you make an investment, you are expecting it to make more money, right? So the end result of any investment is you sell the investment and you get more money than you paid in. Now, does the investment beat inflation? Does the investment beat, let's say, uh, a CD of some type, a more stable investment? That's also the comparison. And then also the cost of opportunity. Maybe you had a opportunity to open a second store and that could have had a higher return on investment, but instead you bought more product. So also cost of opportunity, what opportunities were available to you. And this is why when you're listening to financial advice gurus like Graham Stefan, you can't possibly listen to all their, all their advice. It will not be applicable to you because they don't know what, you know, your special situations are. They don't know what business you're running. They don't know your age is such a big factor in determining risk tolerance. The older you get as you're trying to invest, the less risk you should take as you near retirement. And if you're young, this is your first job, you can take a higher risk tolerance because you haven't even hit your peak earning, if you will. So there's still a lot of money ahead for you to make. So if you hit the lottery, you hit the lottery. If you don't, you don't. Uh, but if you're older, you put all your money into FTX exchange and you're, you know, let's say 70, not to be ageism, ageist, but it's not like, you know, there's too many people trying to hire, unless you're president of the United States, then there's plenty of positions for you in, the, in politics, right? Uh, I, I really don't know why the politicians are so old. I think Bernie is really old too, and uh, Trump is old, and everyone's like really old, and it's like, why? Isn't like, what percent of the US population is like that age? You know, like probably not that high. Um, anyway, it's neither here nor there. I'm trying not to be ages. I'm just saying like, I can't imagine a job outside of being a politician where, you know, everyone is like super old over 70 or 80. <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd be fine. I mean, okay. Not, not, not getting in politics, uh, not getting in politics right now. We got to focus on uh, this very important topic of do I regret investing in magic card? Yes, I do. Cause I don't enjoy it. Now, do I regret buying? I bought $20,000 of Inuyasha cards, including five first edition boxes of Tusagai, which is basically their version of Alpha or their version of uh, Pokemon base, original base. It was in 2005 or 2004 when upon release. And then I also have five uncut sheets. Together with my other Inuyasha collections that I bought probably around 20,000. I don't regret that because I view that as a collectible, not an investment. And I don't think I would ever sell it. The Fire Emblem Cypher, I put in $25,000 this year and I don't regret that. Again, I view that as a collection, um, as a display piece, if you will, once I get it framed up, which is very expensive. I enjoy it. Now, Magic, I did not enjoy. I am not playing physical paper Magic right now. Opening these packs were kind of fun in the beginning, but then you open up packs and you realize, oh, something is terribly wrong with this set. I can open five mythics and every mythic is less than 20 cents. Like, wow. <laughs> you know, so now when I get a mythic, like a con, con, right? You know what I mean? Dominator, I kept getting this one planeswalker and he's worth like $2. And it's like, isn't this the dude on the cover of like the, the, the product? Isn't this the one dude that's like the, the pro, the, uh, protagonist of the product. Why, why is he worth $2 as a mythic? I don't get it. So the excitement of opening packs is zero because unless you're hitting like a altered art wandering empress, right? Wandering emperor, you're not hitting nothing. I mean, even in wandering emperor, I think it's like only $20 and that's the main hit. I mean, and then you look at the streets of new Campana, Elspeth was like a $4 card. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, you know, I've opened enough of this product to realize that something is really wrong here. The more mythics they give you, the less valuable every mythic is. I mean, it's, it's that simple. The more foils they give you, the less valuable. There are cards where the foil card is less valuable than the regular card because the collector's edition is all foil, right? And there are commons that, you know, in collector's edition, they don't have that many commons, like Tolarian thing, where you can only really get them at a 
at a good rate in the draft packs. There's like some Tolarium Serpent comment worth like 99 cents that no one has that they actually need to play with. So like you can't, I mean, half this stuff that when I'm opening these packs, they were fun to begin with. Now they're boring as hell, but luckily I have six months of openings for you when it was still relatively fun. Now I just don't even want to open them because they're so boring. It's like, oh great, I got five myth. Like that should be super exciting, but it's not exciting when they're averaging about 20 cents a mythic. <laughs> you know, I don't understand what the point is. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I mean, eventually when it, the uh, person opening it figure out, whoa, this is uh, not a good product. Anyway, investing in 2023, oof, um, no. Absolutely not. This is not Pokemon. This is not Inuyasha. If you don't enjoy actually playing Magic or opening packs, right, then don't invest because it's not, I mean, if you're investing for it to go up in price, the concept is people have to actually enjoy it again. The negativity just from this one alpha investment, dude, is so great that I think he has really decimated the game, whether or not he will admit that or not. Uh, over one product, one product that sold less than 2,000 of them to the public, and the other 9,000 are gonna be gratefully given away to game stores. And I, I will promise you this, not one game store is gonna protest Magic 30th. Why would they protest it? They're getting it for free. And it doesn't matter if it's $1,000 or 500 or 700, it doesn't matter, it's a free product. It's a gift, okay? Stop, you know, pocket watching people, right? It's a gift. But that, they turned that into such a negative. Oh, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. And, and he doesn't, under, I, I, I've I never seen the Magic community so negative against Magic the Gathering. There's probably other reasons that I can go much in more detail about. But legit, it's one product, they sold less than 2,000 before they pulled it. The rest of it is gonna be sent to stores for free. Those stores, I promise you, Nobody's gonna protest getting it for free. I assure you there's not gonna be one single store, no matter how social justice they are, that will turn down that product. I promise it to you. If it is, hey, post on Reddit, let's see. Let's see you turn it down. I'd love to see it. And now you're seeing people like Numont, the Nummy, and he's opening it and he's, they're always kind of like, yeah, he, he either got it for free, which is more likely, or he, um, I think he probably got it for free. If I had to guess, he got it for free, and now he's opening and promoting it. So the times are going to change. Uh, I think Magic is a dying game. Um, I wanted to just come out and say this. No, no, no collection I bought in 2022 actually made money. They all lost about 50% if I was lucky. Um, possibly much more if I was not lucky. The thing that you have to remember about Magic the Gathering, it is a card, physical card game. It will depend on playability to some extent. It will depend on collectability to some extent. Both these two were devastatingly bad. Playability was not great and collectability was definitely not great. When everything is rare, nothing is rare. When everything is mythic, nothing is mythic. And as soon as, after I opened my first few hundred packs of these new sets, I'm like, oh. And in the beginning, it was kind of exciting. It was like, wow, you're getting like a lot of, you're getting a lot of quote value. That's what I thought. And then once I opened enough of them, I was like, oh no, I understand. You know, this is worthless. This is, you can see it in the actual pack openings. This is worthless, this is worthless. Oh, this is just shit, blah, 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 right? You can actually see it in the pack openings, my realization. You know, after opening enough packs, like probably like 10,000 packs, they're like, whoa, something is like really, really messed up here. When I can open a pack, it can have all the Chase Planeswalker Mythics and still be less valuable than the pack I paid at distributor price. Anyway, uh, not, to, um, not to kind of draw this out too much, um, my overall assessment of 2023, unless things change, is do not view it as an investment. If you in have enjoyment from it, go ahead, play the game, have fun with it. If you don't have enjoyment of it and you just buy boxes and keep in your you know closet, your Rudy closet, your Rudy basement, it's gonna be a bad year for you. It'll be a terrible, horrific year. 
I mean, Amazon is dropping boxes almost every other day right now at $70, 72, exactly. <sighs> Why buy for, from Rudy for 109 when you can get from 72? Plus, Amazon is a much better. You, get, you got to watch the, uh, the Lord of the Rings series, the, what's, what's it called, the, the new one. <laughs> that one loves so much.